Dozens of anti-Semitic flyers turn up in Beverly Hills. We spoke to a college student who found the flyers in her neighborhood. The city's housing crisis is taking center stage in the race for LA's next mayor. The candidates shared their plans to solve the problem. We talked to filmmakers about their work on abortion and reproductive rights. Annenberg TV News is next. The rapper Gabe, formerly known as Kanye West, is facing more backlash for comments he made about the Jewish community. Hi, I'm Bailey Harrison. And I'm Jeffrey Lee. The comments have spurred other anti-Semitic messaging across Los Angeles. We spoke with a student who found anti-Semitic flyers in her neighborhood this weekend. I was actually really shocked. I wasn't really sure what to do. I did pick up as many as I could. I put them in the garbage. The Westwood Century City area, and it's actually a very Jewish-centered community. Mouse Jedian found anti-Semitic flyers near her home. They were distributed by an anti-Jewish hate group called the Goyim Defense League. Members demonstrated on a 405 freeway overpass on the weekend. In a statement to Annenberg Media, Beverly Hills Mayor Lily Boss said, This is not about humanity. I believe every religion, every culture, and every race must drown out this hate that is evil darkness. We will never be silenced. Hate will never win. Boss is the daughter of a survivor of the Auschwitz death camp. Kanye West, you're talking about somebody who has more than twice as many followers on social media as there are Jews in the world. Uh, that, that carries a lot of weight. Look, the history of the Jewish people, for better or for worse, is that we know that words do lead to actions, that um, hatred is, is not something that's, uh, that's ever gone away. So every person, Jewish and non-Jewish alike, this is the opportunity to use your voice, to speak up, to say that this kind of anti-Semitism simply is not permissible. The anti-Semitic demonstrations over the weekend were tied to hate-filled comments from artist Kanye West. He posted anti-Jewish propaganda on Instagram and Twitter, so both social media companies locked his accounts. Corporations left and right are dropping Kanye West as a partner over his statements. And public pressure is mounting on Adidas to drop Kanye as a partner after his appearance on the podcast Drink Champs, where he said, I can say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Today, Governor Newsom released a statement saying the demonstration is, quote, another wake-up call to all of us that we must remain vigilant to protect our values and freedoms, end quote. President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan is temporarily on hold, but the administration is still encouraging students to continue submitting their applications. A federal appeals court has blocked the plan, halting any student debt from being erased. President Biden traveled to Delaware State University last Friday, where he gave a speech to students on his student loan forgiveness program. Republican members of Congress and Republican government. We talked with the president of the California chapter of Student Loan Justice. More borrowers over the age of 50 than under the age of 25, and there are more borrowers over the age of 35 than under 20. This is a very serious crisis that is affecting older borrowers at a much more alarming rate. You know, between predatory interest and fees, so $10,000 would probably wind up saving somebody maybe three to six months worth of, of interest, and then it will be starting from ground zero again. Our mission is to raise awareness to the incredibly predatory practices of the student loan industry and to advocate for the restoration of bankruptcy protections to student loan debt. Bailey, I know you talked with students on campus about the debt relief program. What are students saying now that it's on hold? You know, Jeffrey, um, a lot of students, I think, are discouraged and disappointed about the block on this plan, um, already on top of stress with work and balancing social and career, um, a lot of them were disappointed and here's what they had to say. I think, you know, a lot of us are, are pretty blessed to not have to worry about that, but for the people that do, um, I think that's scary because uh, you're not only, like, th like 
on a daily basis, I'm thinking about exams, schools, midterm, and all of that. But on top of that, if I have to think about, oh, how am I going to pay for this stuff? I mean, I couldn't even imagine. So I, I feel really bad for those folks, honestly. And I, I want to do whatever or whatever we can do to help them. I think it's overall pretty disappointing, um, mainly because uh, we all agree that, or most of us agree, that everyone should have equal access to education. Um, and your previous socioeconomic status should not dictate whether or not you get to, you know, have access to those opportunities, um, especially if some people are, you know, the first generation coming to college. They should be able to, you know, um, be that first person that makes a big difference for their family. I'm sure there would be a lot of stress about it because, you know, if you're taking out loans and then seeing this happen presently, maybe in the future, if, you know, um, if it would help to have your uh, loans forgiven, uh, to see it be blocked would be stressful and also discouraging. <laughs> Bell's eligible for student debt relief includes individuals who made less than 125 grand in 2020 or 2021 and families who made less than 250,000 in 2020 or 2021. The application is open now until December 31st, 2023. To apply, visit studentaid.gov. Today is the last day to register to vote online and by mail in California. There are three options for how you can register. Online at registertovote.ca.gov, paper voter registration by mail, and in person at various locations. Paper voter registration applications are available at county election offices, libraries, the DMV, and U.S. Post offices. To register, you must be 18 years or older on Election Day, and you must be a U.S. citizen and resident of California. After tonight, you can complete the conditional voter registration. This is available at your local election office, voter center, and polling place. Voters in some states, including California, are currently able to vote early in person. There is already record voter turnout. According to data from election officials Edison Research and Catalyst, almost 7.3 million sorry, ballots have been cast. California and Georgia are tied for second for most voter turnout, each reporting more than 800,000 votes so far. What Bruins Vote is hoping to do is make voting as easy and accessible as possible on campus. We wanted to serve as both a resource and a reminder to people going on or along their busy lives that voting is important. We wanna make sure that young people, especially students, know the power of their vote um, and use it effectively this November. Don't know where to vote? Don't worry. There are several ballot drop-off and in-person voting locations close to USC. The yellow pins on the map are drop box locations only. The USC Village is the closest for most students and it's located right by Target and Trader Joe's. The green pins on the map are in-person voting and ballot drop off locations. They include Mesjid Umar Ibn al Khattab and Vermont Avenue Elementary School. Los Angeles mayoral candidates Rick Caruso and Karen Bass are pitching affordable housing projects to address the housing crisis in Los Angeles. Christina, is it possible that they're both on the same wavelength here? That's right, Jeffrey. Both candidates say providing affordable housing solutions is a priority. Real estate developer Rick Caruso promised to house 30,000 people in his first year. His plan focuses on building new temporary housing units. This morning, C Congresswoman Karen Bass promoted an innovative housing concept with a local design firm. The affordable housing project aims to house 15,000 people while providing hundreds of union jobs. Urban Awnings is designing two-story micro-housing communities of about 20 units. They will be protected from the heat and cold under a large awning structure that also produces solar energy. Urban Awnings will be a key part of housing more than 15,000 Angelinos in my first year in office. We're standing here on a city-owned lot with specific renderings for this site with the workers who are ready to get it done. And that's what sets my plan apart. These are real solutions, real plans, with real people ready to build. Bass said she is ready to push state and federal governments to fund the project. Monthly rent in the housing complex will be around $900 to $1,100. We're actually creating a community. We're going to have lots of livable space, livable space that, you know, I'd let my kids live in, you know, that I'd be happy to support my kids living in. So I think that's why our product's a little different. 
reached out to Caruso's campaign team for comment but have not heard back. This afternoon, Caruso tweeted, quote, My plan will house LA's homeless. I will build 30,000 beds in the first year. My plan is ambitious and what this city needs. I have the will and expertise to get the job done. Caruso said his plan is estimated to cost about $843 million to build. Bass's plan has a projected cost of $292 million to build and run for the first year. Whoever wins this race, the solutions won't be cheap. Bailey, Jeffrey, back to you. Thanks, Christina. Opening statements began today in Harvey Weinstein's L.A. sexual assault trial. He has already been sentenced to 23 years in New York. Weinstein pleaded not guilty to 11 sexual assault charges from incidents that allegedly happened between 2004 and 2013. 80 witnesses are expected to testify, including Jennifer Siebel Newsom, the wife of Governor Gavin Newsom. The trial is expected to last six to eight weeks. Math and reading test scores declined for fourth and eighth grade students across the country. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, or NAEP, the NAEP testing took place between January and March this year. The decline in math scores was the largest since 1990. We spoke to a USC Rossier School of Education professor about how the pandemic has impacted scores. This is by far the largest decline ever seen on NAEP over such a short period of time. And so I think it's only logical to think that the decline is driven to a very large extent by what traumatic events happened in between, which was COVID and all the things that went along, co along with COVID. A share of the $190 billion relief funding allocated by Congress will be used to address this decline. Schools are offering tutoring, summer learning, and after-school enrichment programs to help students recover from these academic setbacks. Today marks one of the most important Hindu religious festivals. Find out why some students are confused about the lack of recognition on campus. Abortion and reproductive rights are in the spotlight in a new collaborative film production. We'll hear from the filmmakers. And sewage spills closes local beaches. We spoke with scientists who discussed the impact on people and marine life. In response to the overturning of Roe v. Wade, women writers and directors produced an anthology film called Give Me an A. It's about a woman's right to make decisions about her own body. It's now that abortion is no longer an option, I think we need to discuss what happens if that happens. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm here to execute the USC professor Mary contract. Murphy is holding a screening at Annenberg right family. now to engage students in the discussion. Abortion is a major ballot issue, especially in California, so make sure to check it out if you can. I feel like the film is just like a wake up call to just try to walk in someone else's shoes and just activate that empathy before you take and cast that vote. And you can sit in a theater and just be like, oh my God. I'm not only am I not alone, but there are people who are doing something. Make any of your male identifying friends come see the movie. Make them be uncomfortable because if we are not uncomfortable and open to learning about other perspectives and the world doesn't become a better place. It's making the rounds on the festival circuit. An official release date hasn't been announced yet, but be on the lookout. A sewage spill in Marina del Rey has closed the beach until Wednesday. 700 gallons entered the storm drain, leading to Sentinella Creek and Bologna Creek. A flow in Sentinella Creek will eventually wind up in the ocean. 1,200 gallons of sewage was discharged onto the street near 4545 West 62nd Street, about 5.5 miles from the beach. More information will be released this week. So some of it probably will reach the ocean, but it literally is less than a drop in a pool. It's domestic sewage. It's not industrial sewage. And so it's going to be mostly nutrient. Um, there might be some debris in there, floating debris and stuff like that. But again, it's, there's such a huge dilution factor that won't even show up on the radar screen. Uh, because generally it washes out after you know, three or four days. There's no signs south of here, um, so I suggest they've tested the water there and it's okay. So that's my assumption. An expert 
An expert on the situation says that the impact should not be much. Quote, there is two things to look for, the spill's concentration as well as how long it's been. According to the expert, the spill's concentration should be diluted from the neighboring waters. The time that has passed since the incident means that the sun will have had a longer time to kill the harmful bacteria. Happy Diwali streets are aglow. As of today, it's the first day of celebrating the Hindu festival. USC's cultural student organizations, Southern California Indo-Americans, Hindu Student Organization, and Association of Indian Students are preparing to kick off colorful celebrations open to students of all faiths. It's a week-long celebration where everyone in India lit their households with uh, earthen lamps and burst crackers, fireworks, eat lots of sweets. It's like the whole week is meant to be a dessert week. No main course, no appetizers. It's just deserts. And we offer prayers to our deities, go to temples, dress in colorful clothes. So everyone is invited. We see professors coming. We have invited deans uh, of different uh, schools. So everyone is actually going to come and join us. This is what the thing that we have been seeing in the past. Diwali celebrations start today at 8 p.m. in Gateway Courtyard and will continue throughout the week until October 30th. Be sure to check it out. Everyone is welcome. Michaela, how's the weather here in Southern California? Well, Bailey, it definitely depends where in Southern California you are. I know this morning Santa Ana had winds up to 35 miles per hour, but it doesn't seem to be affecting us here in South Central just yet. We can see that with our current conditions. Let's take a look at them. So 71 degrees, just right. It's not going to be too chilly, but do bring a jacket if you are going out tonight. But I know what everyone's really waiting on. Michaela, what is the hollow weekend weather? I need to know what to wear. So let's look at the five day forecast. Tuesday and Wednesday is sitting at 75 and 72. And then we're going to start to see some divots with Thursday and Friday. Right now, Friday is at 73 with Saturday at 75. But what we're really looking at is the lows, which is around 54. So if you are going out for Halloween night, make sure to dress accordingly. But that was all I had for the weather. My name is Michaela Wegner, and now I'm passing off to Dylan and Michael at Sports. Thanks, Michaela. Coming up on ATVN Sports. A USC athlete hit a career milestone and is making it and is making USC history. Our crosstown rivals couldn't handle the pressure against Oregon, taking their first loss of the season, and boy was that fun to watch. Finally, the men of Troy went to battle in Salt Lake, but unfortunately could not come away with a victory. After a conference loss, are the playoffs still possible? Stay tuned for more after the break. Welcome back to ATVN Sports. I'm Michael Fumafredo. And I'm Dylan Brazier. Let's start off today's show heading up north for the highly anticipated UCLA-Oregon matchup. Both offenses started off slow, but Oregon makes it clear who's the, whose house they're at, winning 45-30. The, Bru the Bruins did not play horrible. Zach Charbonnet had 151 yards rushing, and Dorian Thompson-Robinson had 300 yards overall. But man, their defense could not keep up with Bo Nix throwing for five touchdowns and the Oregon offense scoring 28 points just in the second quarter. It dug a hole for UCLA that they could not get out of. And Michael, how does, how does this affect the Pac-12 race for the playoffs? Well, USC might be down in the rankings, but don't be worried because their playoff hopes are still alive. Sure, they'll need a lot of help, but the route is there for the Trojans. Let's check out how. So first, USC needs to win the Pac-12. That's going to take out Oregon and give USC two great wins heading into Selection Day. Next, Georgia and Ohio State are going to have to win their respective conference championships. That's also going to eliminate Alabama, and then Tennessee and Michigan are both going to miss out on their conference championship games. Why is this important? Well, let's say Clemson wins and takes that third spot. There's still one more spot left to go in the playoffs. USC's got a better resume than these two, and then it all comes down to the Big 12. TCU right now has the best case, but a slip up from them, maybe to Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game, could be enough for USC to sneak into that number four spot. Dylan, I know it's a lot to ask for, but it's, it's college football. Anything could happen. Very true. Since this past weekend was USC's bye week, we had a lot of time to think about the 43-42 loss that happened against Utah nearly two weeks ago. With the offense firing on all cylinders, the Trojans could not be stopped. But Utah's powerful offense kept them in the game when they needed to most. And, oh, and in the end, injuries, questionable refing, and Utah tight end Dalton Kincaid tore up the Trojan defense, leading the men of Troy to their first loss of the season. 
Michael, the Trojans had the biggest trouble defending the pass game, allowing 415 yards. We traveled to Arizona this week, a team who averages 334 yards through the air. Is this going to be an issue, and how can we bounce back? Shouldn't be an issue, but the way they're going to bounce back is they need to get Jalen Delora to throw the football. He's only had one pick in the last three games this season, but throughout the year he's had two games where he's thrown multiple interceptions. So the potential to turn the ball over is there. The only way that happens, though, let Caleb Williams cook. The Trojans are at their best when the offense is clicking and the defense is able to play with the lead. You force Delora to throw the ball, and USC's gotten 12 interceptions this year. I don't see why they can't do that again. Very true. Next up, women's volleyball traveled to the Bay Area this weekend to take on Berkeley and Stanford. The women of Troy had a promising win over the Cal Bears, winning 3-1 with Amelia Vesca setting a new career high of 20 kills and Mia Tuaniga having a career best of 62 assists. Unfortunately, the Stanford Cardinal got the best of the Trojans, winning 3-0 in the following game. We knew this matchup was going to be a tough one as Stanford is ranked 7th in the country and 1st in the Pac-12. They will have an opportunity for revenge on November 9th, but for now, they're focused on Utah and Colorado as they take them on this weekend. And wrapping up today's show, men's water polo may have lost on Friday, but the weekend was an all-sorrows for the Trojans, who rallied for a crucial win near the season's end. Number two ranked Cal defeated the Trojans 14-10 in Berkeley on Friday, snapping USC's three-game win streak. SC made it a one-goal game in the fourth quarter before Cal scored three unanswered. Jake Earhart came to play on Sunday, scoring four goals to take down Pepperdine 13-11 to wrap out the weekend. Earhart is now 10th in career goals for USC, and just two shy of ninth all-time and three shy of eighth. The Trojans face number three ranked Stanford at home on Sunday. Tenth all-time? <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to your sports update. Here's Jeffrey with the rest of your nightly news. Welcome to our news segment where we, we will be covering the top three entertainment headlines of the day. First, Emmy award-winning actor Leslie Allen Jordan died today after a car crash in Hollywood. Jordan was most known for his roles in Hearts of Fire, Will and Grace, and American Horror Story. Fans will miss his southern accent and humor. Next, Drake and 21 Savage have teamed up once again to create a new album titled Her Loss that will release on October 28th. This was announced in the music video for their latest hit together, Jimmy Cooks. Also, the DC movie Black Adam opened number one at the box office over the weekend. It has made $67 million so far. Dwayne Johnson stars at the, as the titular anti-hero Black Adam. And last but not least, Taylor, Swift, Taylor Swift's new album has students talking. Over the weekend, Taylor Swift dropped her 10th studio album, Midnight's. The album is 13 songs about long sleepless nights of her career. Midnight's became Spotify's most streamed album in a day and Taylor became the most streamed artist in a single day. Fans anticipated this album because of the mystery surrounding it and for the new music. However, fans say they have mixed reviews. Uh, I think it's pretty mid. I mean, the songwriting's not bad. She's a good songwriter, but it's just not the style of music I like. I like her like old pop stuff, kind of like 1989. I like the Taylor Swift album because I think it was like kind of a fusion of all of her different um, pop sounds combined together, and there were some really good um, songwriting moments on there and storytelling as well. Many older fans of Taylor Swift say they have already fallen in love with the album, while newer Taylor fans say they don't like it as much. Thanks for watching Annenberg TV News. From everyone at Annenberg Media, I'm Bailey Harrison. And I'm Jeffrey Lee. For more coverage, watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Annenberg Media. Good night.